All right, so this is um, an example of what your end product uh, would look like inside of Maya. So the ball is going to roll for two seconds. It's going to do three major bounces, some trailing bounces, and then roll for two seconds. So you see the three major bounces, some trailing bounces, and then it rolls for another two seconds. That's as simple as it has to be. Um, if you're short on time, do exactly that. Roll, bounce, roll, be done. Okay? It does have to roll. All right. Um, I have a uh, material on here that is a band so that I can see that it's rolling. Without that material, if I just hit this, five, and then I hit play, you can't see that it's rolling. Right? So I want to make sure that whatever material you have on there is something that I can see that the ball is actually rolling. Okay? Um, you'll have some nice lighting in here. You'll have some nice materials, textures. Um, this one, I added a texture to the floor. I added a texture to the ball. And then some nice lighting in the scene, and that's what I get. Okay. Um, I've also added motion blur to this. I believe I turned it on. Where are you at? There you are. Yes. Now we're at the point where we're using motion blur. Okay. With the stick one and on, we'll be using motion blur. Um, unless we have some other issue, but I, we shouldn't. Okay. So that means that that texture needs to be very vivid and bright so that we can see it. Here is a pretty extreme pose. Uh, the ball is flat, so we're getting, you know, it's kind of smushed. When we're here, it's not going to be as flat. We will be able to see it, okay? And I can adjust, obviously, how much blur I have on there. My camera move is nice and easy. There's nothing crazy happening here. I'm not trying to, to uh, create a separate animation altogether with the camera. It's simply just there to help me tell the story of where the ball starts, where it ends up, and what happens in the middle. Um, here's another camera move that I have. This one doesn't move at all. It's just locked to that side and just showing, you know, that angle of it. It's a boring camera move, but it still works, okay? You want to find something that's going to help tell the story about what's happening, not hinder it. If I make a new camera and I'm above it, let's say, I miss all the fun animation stuff, okay? I really lose all the animation of it rolling on the floor and coming up and down and whatever else. Uh, same thing if I'm here, like dead on, I again lose that effect. I'm not saying it's not a cool effect or it could be used for something else, just not for this assignment, okay? Because I want to be able to see from a three-quarter, from a side view, something like that, how your ball is moving, rolling, and bouncing up and down, okay? Um, I'll have the sheet in the binder. I think I already put it there. I'm just gonna quickly go through it. Some of this I already touched on. So the bouncing ball is the name of the assignment. Its due date will be the 20th, which is basically a week and a Wednesday. So next Wednesday, this will be due. It shouldn't take that long once you've gone through and understand the process of it. Uh, I recommend you do two of them, just like the stick. Do one just to get the nuts and bolts of it, then do another one that tells the story of it, okay? Um, understanding organic animation of bouncing ball, two seconds of rolling, three main bounces, extra bounces, two seconds of rolling again. Most of the people that lose points don't do the rolling, or they don't do the bounces correctly. Um, squashing, stretching, and rolling. Make sure all three of those things are there, too. A reason for the bounce. So one thing that I don't have in this specific one, and I'm gonna leave that up to you for your own assignment, is to figure out why is it bouncing. Um, is there something like shooting it up that's making it bounce? Um, you could have it roll like to the edge of something and then stop and then bounce because it's like actually jumping, like the ball has a will of its own and can control itself. That's a possibility too. You could have a little platform shoot it up. So think of different ways that you would have that happen, okay? A reason for bouncing. Nice materials, lighting, cameras with motion blur, smooth animation, and a simulation of gravity and physics on the ball, okay? And what that means is it's not floating. It's not just like a ball in air just kind of doing that. <clears throat> we want to feel like there is some sort of realism to it. Uh, you'll be turning in your storyboard, so your sketches of what the ball is going to be doing, and then you'll be turning in your ball movie. Those are the only two things that I need. The animation, I said six seconds. Typically, that's how long it takes. It might be a little bit longer, 
probably won't be shorter though because you have two seconds at the beginning of rolling, two seconds at the end, so it's already four seconds, and you have to have the other bounces in there. And then the rest of the stuff, eight points, 960 by 540, okay? Any questions on the sheet? All right, so go ahead, you can say something. Yeah, you could have it do that too, yep. All right, so I'm gonna start off from scratch and this is how you're gonna start it. The first thing you do is you go to your project window, you make your project folder. I'm not gonna do it here. I've already shown that a couple times, okay? Then you're gonna make a sphere and you will use a polygon sphere. That will be the best one to use, not a NURBS sphere uh, or a volume sphere. That's not even gonna be something, okay? So use a polygon sphere. Um, I'm gonna turn my grid on just so you can see this. I don't like to animate anything below the grid. I use the grid as my actual ground plane. So anything I animate, I oops, set it right on top of the grid. So that's one unit up, that's where my grid is. I also don't like to have anything in my Translate Y. I like to start off with a fresh palette. If I ever wanna jump back to the beginning before I animated anything, I want a spot to do that. I may forget that I put a one there. I wanna have this back to zeros. So under Modify, I'm going to go to Freeze Transform, and that resets all those things. So now these are all back to zero without moving this back down. Okay, so that's its new zero spot. So um, if it's like past semesters, a quarter of you will not listen to me. I'm just jump ahead and do whatever. That's up to you. Take this thing in steps. Don't try to animate every single thing at the same time. It will not work, especially if this is your first ball bouncing animation, which I'm assuming it is, okay? Um, the first thing that we wanna do is animate just the bounce. Once the bounce is there, then we can focus on all the other stuff. If the bounce isn't there, if it doesn't look like a good bounce, there's no point in, in moving further, okay? So uh, which attribute am I gonna animate for bouncing this thing up and down? Y translate, yep, okay. That'll come later, yep. That's, we're just gonna do the one thing right now, okay? So at frame one, he's on the ground, okay? I'm ignoring the, the rolling part right now. I'm not even thinking about the rolling. That will, I do that after. Um, so frame one, this is where he's about to start bouncing. Let's say frame 20, he's up in the air. And then let's say frame 40, he's back on the ground. Now this is where that zero comes in handy because I can just type in zero and then set my key. So now I have one bounce. It goes up and then comes back down. There it is. And then I'm gonna go do my second bounce. I'll go another 20 frames up. I'll go another 20 frames up, bring it back down. If you like tedious work, this part is very tedious. Oops. Come on, move up. And then 120, and we'll set it back down. Okay, so I'm only worried about the first three major bounces right now. There, 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 and there. Okay. All right, that took me forever to do. Uh, I'm going to delete that and show you a better way to do it. So if I know that at certain frames he's going to be on the ground, I'm just going to go and set all those first. So I'm going to set a key here at 1. Uh, oops, set a keyframe at 40, set a keyframe at 80, and set a keyframe at 120 where he's on the ground. Then I'm gonna go to 20 and scoot him up and then set a key there. Now if I go to 60, he jumps back down to the ground if I left click, but if I middle click at 60, it doesn't update the time so he stays floating in space. So then I can set another key there, middle click, set another key. That's much quicker, boom, 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 set those keys. Um, the professional animators, if they're doing a bouncing ball, they won't even work in the, the viewport. They'll just jump right to the node gra or right to the graph editor and just put their keyframes right in there and start tweaking them all in there. Uh, we're not there yet. All right, so this gives us the exact same-ish animation uh, that we had a second ago. So tell me what's wrong with it. Floating. It's floating, right? It doesn't feel like it's moving. So let's analyze this for a minute. Where is the fastest part this ball is gonna be moving um, on the way up, is it gonna be at the start of the animation or at the end of the animation going up? The middle will be the fastest? Yeah, it'll, it'll, be at the start. it'll be at the start, right? It has to, because if it goes fastest in the middle, something gave it momentum to get there. So the fastest will happen right here at the beginning, and where's the slowest then? 
right there. Okay, so this should be the fastest right at the beginning. This should be the slowest. And then the same thing on this side, this should be the fastest. So uh, some stuff, definitely we will jump into the dope sheet and play with it. Typically, I'm going to jump to the graph editor first and start tweaking stuff in here. So this right now tells me that everything is easing in and easing out of every single movement. Okay, it shouldn't. The fastest stuff should happen right here at the beginning, right here at the ends. Okay, all the stuff where it's near the bottom. So I'm going to make those linear. Now that will help slightly. I'm going to rewind it and play it again. Okay, now it feels like maybe there's a little bit more bounce there. It's still going crazy slow, but it feels like there's some more bounce there. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back to the graph editor and I'm going to enhance this a bit more. One of the things we haven't touched on yet is our ability to actually stretch these handlebars out. Um, it's a two-step process, and I'm not sure why they've never like, not made it a two-step process, but it is. So I go to curves, and I go to weighted tangents. So I've grabbed everything and done that. Then I go to tangents and say free tangent weight. And now I can grab these and middle click and drag and control them. Before, I could not do that. Okay. So now what I'm able to do is go to each one of these handles, and really customize what this handle is doing. Now here, these two handles are locked together. I'm going to grab all these bottom ones, and I'm going to click on this break. Okay, now they're independent. So now what I'm doing is really kind of, uh, of exaggerating how fast up and down this is going to go. Don't be concerned with where's the exact spot for this. You're an animator. You don't know the exact spot until you look at it and see. Okay, so now we have this really exaggerated motion of what's happening. It shoots up pretty quick, floats for a bit, and then shoots back down fast again, floats for a bit, shoots back down again. This could be, if this was a, a, an animation of a character, this could be how that character bounces. He jumps in the air, there's this floating period, and he slams down and does it again, and he slams down and does it again. That could be how uh, an animation of a character could even work. Um, I need to go to the dope sheet, though, because these are way too far apart. These 40, sec 40 frames, which is a second and 10 frames, is way too long for that to bounce. So I'm going to go in here and just start pushing stuff back. So I'm going to go, let's say, that far, that far. And again, don't be too concerned with, you know, what are your exact numbers? I need those exact numbers. You will not know those numbers. You just have to figure it out because uh, that's part of animation, is being able to look at something and see where it looks off. This is still not going to look right, but it's just going to take us to the next step. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now I also want to check my graph editor and verify that I didn't screw anything up. Sometimes when you do these extreme movements, then you jump to the dope sheet and start squishing stuff. Um, the graph editor sometimes just goes crazy uh, and starts like doing stuff like that. Okay. So just be aware of what that looks like. All right. So there we go. So those look much better as far as bounces go. I, I get a lot more feel for how they're hitting the ground and they're coming up. Okay. Uh, now I need to adjust something else. Let's pretend that these are bounces caused by something like a platform. He rolls over a platform, the platform shoots him up, he bounces, and then he bounces and bounces. What's going to happen to each bounce progressively as we go from the first one to the second one to the third one? shorter, right? So they're not going to bounce up as high. He has a certain amount of energy and that energy gets dissipated every single time. So if I go to my graph editor and I just scoot this down and I grab this and scoot this down, you can see what's happening to my graphs here. I'm just going to have to grab these two and scoot those down. Now this is also not correct yet. We will adjust it in a second, but I want you to see it. Okay. So where's the problem? Yeah, so the first bounce, it takes him 15 or 30 frames to get from the start to the end. The second bounce also is 30 frames, and the third bounce is also 30 frames. If he's bouncing less high, a shorter distance, he should take less time to do that as well, okay? And this is the part that is, if, if you look at it graphically, it makes a lot of sense. This hill right here, is the template for what these other two hills look like, but just smaller, okay? 
So this hill definitely does not look like that one. This one is taller than it is wider. This one is about even. So I'm going to take this and squish this over and squish that over. Now these two look like they could be related. This one, not so much. Let's scoot him over. Let's scoot that over. Notice I'm not doing this in the dope sheet. Um, I can do it right here in the graph editor. There we go. And maybe just adjust oops, that handle. Let's scoot over. There we go. OK, so that might be close enough. Let's see. There we go. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for what we're doing, OK? So now those three things feel like they're all part of the same movement. It goes from a big jump to a medium jump to a little jump. And it feels like all three of those jumps are all part of the same kind of thing. It doesn't go from super big to like this weird floaty thing to this other one. It all feels like it's progressively getting less. Um, if I exaggerated this even further, just so you can see where it wouldn't work, let's say I went from this huge jump to this tiny jump. Come on. There. This, this. And I'm just going to undo to get back to where I was. All right. So if I did this, this is going to look weird. Right? That doesn't look like those are continuous. They look like they're all part of different things. Right? And again, in some animations it could work. In this animation it will not work. Okay? Um, so I'm just going to go back to my graph editor. I'm going to hit undo until that goes back to where he was. That's good. I'm just going to scoot this over a little bit and adjust that handlebar. Make sure I didn't screw it up too much. OK. So now I would add the trailing bounces at the end of this. And the trailing bounces are easy to do. All I do is I just go past this and figure out how long it's going to take. We already said that every bounce is going to get progressively shorter. We know that. And every bounce is going to get progressively uh, narrower. So if I look at how long this bounce took, basically it took about 15 frames. Here's frame 50. Here's frame 64, so 14 frames. The next bounce should not take 14 frames. So if I go from 64, I'm just going to add 10 just to be simple with it. And I'm going to set a keyframe in Y. Then I'll go up, let's say, that many frames. Then I'll go up, let's say, that many frames. OK? The distance between these two right here is 30 frames. The next one is about 20 frames. Then this one is about 14 frames. Then this one is about, I don't know, 10 frames. And then that's uh, 6 or so. And then this is like 3. OK, so now I just go in the middle and I just scoot it up. There's a little bit. And then this one's a little bit. And then this one's a little bit. I go into my graph editor and I verify that it's doing what it should be doing. It's definitely not doing it here. I don't know what happened there. Let me just grab all these bottom ones, make sure they are linear. Grab this and just adjust my handlebars so that everything looks happy. Uh, this needs to be broken. And just like everything, if you don't spend the time in the software, this semester is going to be a huge struggle for you. This stuff that we're doing, even though we're going to be doing it in, on different objects, different things, it's the same stuff. Same graph editor, same keys, and just applying it different. All right, That looks good enough. This one is so tiny, I don't even think any real tweaking here is going to do anything major. So we'll just leave it like that. All right. So now we rewind, we hit play. There we go. So now we have our three major bounces, and we have a couple trailing bounces. right? Just like the basketball, if this was a basketball bouncing, it might have a lot more bounces between them. The heights might be from here to here to here to here to here forever, basically. Or if this is a uh, bowling ball, you might go from a big bounce like this to a small bounce like that. With this animation, don't worry about what we're specifically animating. Just try to get these three major bounces and some trailing ones, and then we're good from there. Um, it is a good idea if you do plan on going into animation that you do have the ability to say, this is a bouncy, uh, uh, bowling ball, this is a tennis ball, this is a ping pong ball, because um, they all do animate a bit differently. Cool. So translate Y is done. Like That's all we have to do for translate Y at the moment. So now we can animate this, let's say, going forward. So I'm going to animate it coming back. 
Now I didn't set any keyframes on X. I was very careful as I'm setting keyframes that I only set it on the Y. If I set keyframes on everything, when I go to the graph editor, this is gonna be a huge mess, okay? So don't do that. Um, I'm gonna rewind it to the beginning. I'm gonna go to translate X and I'm gonna set a key there. I'm gonna go to the very end of this. I'm gonna scoot this way over and set a keyframe there. And then rewind and then play. There we go. How does that look? It does. <clears throat> There's a moment right at the beginning, right there, <laughs> where it picks up a bit of speed. Yep. Well, the first one's jumping very far, but then all of a sudden it picks up speed, like right, right after this, right? Yep. So if we go to the graph editor, let's look at what's happening. Um, well, let's look at the Y first. So here, we're basically going pretty consistently spaced as far as the, the speed of this goes, okay? Uh, in the translate X, all of this area here is flat. And what does flat mean in the graph editor? It, slower, slower, right? So the flatter it is, the slower it's gonna go. So right here, there's barely any movement at all. When it's supposed to be moving the fastest because that's where the ball is bouncing the biggest, um, so we need to adjust that. So this is another area that you have to play with. It's not something that you will know right away. There's not a magic button in here that says just make it look cool. We just grab handlebars and start moving them. Typically, this is how I like to do it. This means go fast and then gradually slow down, which makes sense because the bigger movement's gonna be moving faster and the smaller movement's gonna be moving slower. We will see if that works. I might be just full of it, we'll find out. Look at that, boom. <laughs> That definitely works, right? It launches. Uh, maybe I don't want it to launch though. That seems like a pretty far distance. Uh, let's go here. Let's just look at the X. I'm gonna scoot this up and I'm gonna drag this down. I have to make sure that it doesn't go above this keyframe, which is what it's doing right here. So I'm just gonna scoot that down. It'll go past where I want it to and then come backwards. <laughs> we'll watch it just so we can see that. It's an unexpected thing. There you go. Whoa. <laughs> So you saw it go past the keyframe and then back. <laughs> there we go. So maybe something like this. That we'll see if that works. There we go. That's a bit more pleasant. Uh, we also want to control how far the ball is moving. If the ball moves a mile down the road, we have to animate our camera moving a mile down the road. So we don't want it to go too crazy. This feels like an appropriate amount of movement on this. Okay. Same thing with the height. If the ball flies too far in the, in the air, we have to account for that. We have to be able to utilize our uh, camera to show that off. Here, I think that's probably a pretty good height. I can be pretty close to this, pretty close to where the ball is visible, and still see where it's hitting the ground and hitting, and hitting the ceiling. Uh, if the ball went up too high, and again, I'll exaggerate it, I have to be pretty far back. Well, really far back, look at that. <laughs> really far back in order to see the ball do what it's going to do, okay? Yeah. Now again, for some animations, that might work, not this one. <laughs> there we go, that's a nice little bounce. Okay, so now comes the time for um, rotating. See how I'm building on top of that first one. Um, if I try to do the translate X at the same time, most people will set keyframes in the same spot you're setting the translate X. Because of the way I did it, I've only set two keyframes for it, and I have complete control over what those two keyframes are doing. Uh, rotation. So which direction is going to rotate on this? All three of them? This one? That one? Someone said this one, right? Good. Uh, if you're never sure of what letter or, or uh, axis it is, uh, remember, red is X, green is um, Y, and then blue is Z. So if I just look at that Z direction, that should be the one. So I'm gonna go here and set a keyframe. Now this gets into a bit of a formulatic, formulatic thing. I don't even know if that's a word, but we'll just pretend formulaic. it is. Formulaic, there we go, thank you. Um, in order for us to do squash and stretch, um, I need to have the ball rotated a certain way every time it goes into a squash or stretch situation. Let me jump back to Google and ball bounce. Okay, so 
If we look at this, you'll see the ball is perfectly round here, but it is perfectly football there and perfectly pancake here. Those are technical terms for this kind of animation. Um, if my ball rotates more than 180 degrees from one bounce to the next, I can't do a perfect football or a per perfect pancake because the ball will be like doing one of these things, okay? So every time it goes up and then it comes back down like this on, a, on those three major ones, it'll be 180 degrees regardless of which hill it is, okay? So zero is here. I'm gonna go to the first bounce and rotate this 180 degrees. Oops, that's way too far. And it just so happens it's actually negative 180, uh, and that's just how it works. I'm gonna go to the next one and do the same thing, negative 360. And I'm just adding 180 to it or subtracting 180 from it. Negative 540, you can pull out a calculator if you need to. Those are my first three, boom, boom, and boom, okay? After that, I can do whatever. Those first three are the only ones that are gonna squish, after this, there's not enough momentum to get any squishing or not enough even time to get any squishing in there, okay? So let's look at the graph editor again. Here's my rotate Z. Starts off here, goes into there, there, and there. I'm gonna do just basically the same thing I did on the uh, translate X, just straighten this out. Okay, so we have a nice straight movement from one spot to the next. Okay, I'll come back and do the other rotate Z after I'm all done. Now comes the part that everyone struggles with, squashing and stretching. Okay, so what is this one? Wrong, this one is wrong. <laughs> what is this one? Right. Also wrong, <laughs> okay? Whenever you scale something, that is not the same thing as stretching or squashing. This scales the ball but we don't have any volume to it. The, the ball has basically lost the volume. It's kind of like if you deflated a ball, what it might do. We need to scale it down when we squash it like this and scale it out. That way we're getting it looking like it's squashing or stretching, okay? And the same thing the other way. When we stretch it, we go up like this and we scale it in like that, okay? That's exaggerated, but that's what we're doing, okay? We have three different axes, scale X, Y, and Z. X and Z will always work together. Y will always be the opposite of them, okay? Um, if we look at our graph editor, let's, let me just set a keyframe on one of these, or on these three, just so I can show them, okay? Their current position is at one. So whenever it stretches or, or squash it, squashes or stretches, they're basically two of these are gonna go in one direction, X and Z, the other one is gonna go in the other direction. And they're always gonna fluctuate around one, okay? So they're basically gonna go below and above one every single time, okay? Uh, and basically what that means is I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't be scaling this up and then scaling that up too because now suddenly the ball gained mass. It's like inflated and it shouldn't be doing that. It should, this one goes above one, that means the other two are gonna go below one, okay? Now it's not perfect math, but if you just if you looked at this and said, okay, if this goes, just as a for instance, 1.5, then these two could go to like 0.75, okay? If you go to 0.5, that's like too thin, I think, okay? But you'll see how those are always gonna be the same. All right, oops. All right, so now let's look at where these are actually going to be squashing and stretching. Okay, so um, actually this picture is pretty good right here. All right, so ignore this right here and ignore this first red squash. The first thing that happens is it does what? Stretches, okay. So it does not stretch out here. Here it's a perfect round sphere. The next frame though, it stretches, okay. Now this is a pretty abrupt change. You are free to do it over two frames if you want to. Like you might wanna do it at three uh, just to give yourself some time. I'm gonna do it um, with a two frame difference. So I'm just doing this and doing that. My numbers here, 0 0.73, 1 1.5, 0 0.73, okay? I'm gonna set a key. All right, when it gets to the top, what will it look like here? Perfectly round. Okay, 
Now, where's the next keyframe going to be for this? Tell me when to stop. Uh, there. Here. Uh, go back two frames. Yes, sir. Actually, we're going to go back one frame just because of how fast this is moving. Uh, and this will be what? Squash or stretch? Stretch. And same thing. Maybe I stretch this out a little bit too far. There you go. And then set a key. Okay, tell me when the next keyframe happens. Well, we can. We should. Squash goes right here. Yep. Okay. So um, this is going to scale in. This is going to scale out. Good? No, it's not good. That doesn't match it at all. I need more. See, this is 1.5. That's 0.7. I just needed more of it. If you aren't aware of it as you're doing it, basically the ball will get smaller as you go, and that will just look weird. Okay. Tell me when the next keyframe happens. Right there. Right there. Yep. And same thing, right? This goes in. This goes in. And then we set a key. Okay. So now let's look at this and see how it's looking. Let's go here. There we go. Perfect. It's not perfect. I still need to adjust those rotates. They're kind of weird. Um, I don't like how it's... It shouldn't be angled like this and moving left and right so much. So I think my rotate might need a little bit of a tweaking here. Oh, just too much. I think I'll, there we go. I was on my scale. Uh, there we go. Maybe something like that. Nope, I need to adjust that further. Let's go here and see. Typically, I do this at the end, but I just want to adjust it now. Nope, I really need to rotate that further at the beginning. So let's go here. And then this. There you go. That's good enough for, for now, at least. OK. Typically, I come back at the very end, and I'll go in here and just set some extra rotation keyframes just to angle it the exact angle that I want it to go. Uh, when they do stuff at Pixar, they literally go frame by frame and look at every single aspect of every single character. Um, okay, So this process will be looped over and over again. So here's this one. Boom, it comes up like this. If I know where these keyframes are in my, in my timeline, I know exactly where to go. Here's the middle. Just like you said, that goes back to one. I can cheat also. I can go to the next keyframe where it's in the middle and just set another keyframe. Uh, then I can go here right before it's hitting the ground and do my stretchy. Oops. Push that in. Over here. All right, that should be squashed. So I'm going to go here and stretch it out again. Go back there. And then the same thing here, stretch it out. Just like our bouncing um, height, the same thing should happen to the squash and stretch. Progressively, it should get less and less squashed and less and less stretched. There we go. And then right here, this is going to go back to 1, not 0. And then that's it. The first three are the only ones that need the squashing and stretching. After that, like I said, there's not enough time to do that. So let's rewind and play. Okay. So that seems to work pretty good. It's a little bit exaggerated, but we will adjust. Let's go to the graph editor and take a look. Let's go to the graph editor and take a look. Where are you at? Oh, you're already open down here. So this is, again, one of those areas where people, it's hard to see what's actually happening here. Okay, So this is my one line right down the middle. <clears throat> These are all of the um, above ones. And then obviously, the ones down here are the below ones. Um, they will not be a perfect match. As far up as it goes, it will not go down as far um, as it's animated. Uh, but what should happen is, this is my first one that's stretched out. If this is my first one, progressively, these should get less and less and less. And right now, they're not. They're getting like big and then kind of like middle and then big again and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and just shift drag that down below this one. And then grab that one and do the same thing. Then grab this one and do the same thing. And 
gradually I'm going to shrink these closer to one. Never cross the line. Don't cross your beams. It's against the rules. Stream. stream, thank you. Don't cross the streams. And bring that down further. These end ones are not a huge deal. It's the, the beginning ones that are the biggest deal. This one I'm going to use that as my base and then go here and squish that and squish this. This might have to come down just a bit further. Same thing there. This middle one can scoot in. Yes. There we go. Like I said, it's not a huge deal if these ones aren't perfect at the end, but typically this is what should happen. I think that would look better like that too. And you would look better like that, closer to that one. Okay. So that feels gradually we're getting closer to one. That's what we should have. So now we rewind it. We hit play. And we definitely see there's a huge difference in what we had. Before, each one of those was basically as long as the first one. Now we're getting closer to that um, hitting on those, those little areas. Okay. So that's the nuts and bolts part. Now I do the rolling. Okay. And I do the rolling because when I hit play, I don't want to have to watch it roll for two seconds and then do the bouncing. I want to focus on the bouncing because that's the hardest part. Now that I have this perfect, now I can just go into the dope sheet and just move everything down. How far should I move everything down? Which is how many frames? 60, right? So if I start my animation right there at 60, there we go. And then we'll scoot this over like this. And oh, I'm so close. I'm at 140 right here, so I'm going to go to 20. I don't know. I'll go to 210. There we go. All right, so 210 is going to be the end of my animation of rolling. So now I just need to add the rolling before and the rolling after, and then work on my transition. So I'm going to go before this. I'm going to scoot this way back, and then set a key on X, go to the end, push this forward a bit, and set a key on that. The start of this is going to happen a lot faster because that's where the, moment, the momentum's coming from. The end of it is going to go slower because that's where it's slowing down. Okay. Now I'm going to go in the graph editor and tweak just the translate X. So that, and that looks good. So it's going to go fast, 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 and then slow down. Okay. If I'm telling more of a story, I may have my character sitting there, and then maybe something comes and hits it and then it pushes it forward. So the start of my animation um, could look like that if it's more drastic. Ignore this bumpy part, but it could look like that. Mine doesn't, it's just gonna be a basic thing. Um, so that's the moving part. I wanna verify that it looks good. Notice how far back I am so I can see if it still works. Perfect, it looks like it's continually moving. It doesn't feel like there's any stops or hiccups along the way. Um, now I need to add the rotation. Uh, after we get to this point, notice there's no rotation in the ball. It just consistently moves in that direction. If we just look at this graph for the rotate, we should be able to dictate what this rotation is going to do, okay? Based on, okay, it's going this direction. It's not going to just jump up. It's not going to go straight over. It's going to continue in this trajectory back and the same thing forward, okay? So I'm just going to drop in a keyframe for rotation here at the end and just rotate it like that and say set a key. Randomly I rotated it. Same thing this way. Rotate it backwards, set a key. Now I go in the graph editor and look at that rotation and you can see this doesn't make sense. It doesn't under, it makes no sense why it would speed up and then slow down here all of a sudden. Um, it should be in a nice alignment like that. Okay. Same thing here at the end. This is actually really good. This, uh, I was perfect on that one. See, I don't think I would want to put that any higher. That's good. Uh, this could probably use some adjustment, but like I said, I'll have to tweak that after. Okay, so now I have a good amount of uh, rotation here. I'm going to turn on my wireframe so I can see this as I hit play. There it is. Oops. Now, this is where we have to, again, kind of look at stuff. It's sliding. <laughs> it should not be sliding. So let's go here and maybe we'll uh, have to tweak this a bit. Maybe move it up some. Maybe tweak that a bit more. There we go. 
Okay, let's look at it again. Still sliding some. I really got to take this up. Uh, I may have to go a bit more drastic on this than uh, originally thought. There we go. That feels better. Okay, I would still go even a bit further on this because I'm still not liking how that's uh, blending into it. There we go. If you're ever unsure, just go crazy with it and then look at it and see. I still think a little bit more. Holy cow. There we go. All right, so that's good for now. Okay. So now what I need to do is just to verify everything is cool. Um, I'm going to throw in a plane, make this huge. There we go. I'm going to turn off my wireframe, and I'm going to click on that. Now what I'm looking for here is as the ball starts bouncing and stretching and squashing, I want to make sure it doesn't go through the ground. Okay, So I'm just going to watch. I see a little bit. That's fine. A little bit is OK going through the ground. Nothing yet. Make sure we're looking in the right spot. Yes. Okay. All right. So it never goes through the ground, which is good. Now let's go to our side view or front view. And let's make sure that none of its uh, pancake modes are floating. Sometimes when you do it in pancake, you've scaled it like so. And so it came off the ground. This is my ground. It's floating slightly. So I will adjust it by just taking the translate Y and then resetting its keyframe. Then I'll go to the next pancake, make sure it's touching the ground, and set a Y again. Go to the next one, scooch it down a bit, set a key. And then after this, it should be rolling perfectly on the ground, which it looks like it is. Yep. OK, now that I have everything else set up, now it's time for uh, the transition. So right now it's just set up to uh, roll, and then all of a sudden, boom, it just shoots up. Right? It wouldn't do that. Uh, typically, there would be some sort of like squashing that would happen beforehand. I'm going to set a scale keyframe here. I'm going to go up a frame and then do a little squash. And then, I of course, have to add something in there to tell why it's squashing and stretching and flying up, but that'll be up to you. It could. It could be anything. Uh, as long as it makes sense, as long as the story feels like it's you know still there, it works. OK? So that's essentially, in a nutshell, that's how we're doing the bouncing ball. Yours will not look exactly the same as mine. You will still have the two seconds of rolling. You will still have the three major bounces and trailing bounces. You will still have two seconds of rolling at the end. But how the story gets told is going to be up to you. <clears throat> um, so that's what you'll do with yours, some sort of little animation, tell a story. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show in here is just how to get a line. You assign your material, give it a name, of course. And then under color, you don't leave it a, a solid color. You click on the mapping. You, go to, um, you can go to file if you want to bring in a file or picture of something. Uh, or you can go to ramp, which is what she um, or what I did. Set this interpolation to none. Hit six on here, and then you can see I can scoot this white to adjust where that's lining up at. And if I want to add colors, I click, click here, pick a color, and then I can just adjust where these are at to get the exact alignment of where I have those. And now that'll all move with it, and then we can see it rolling. Sweet. OK. Look at things like shadows. Look at things like um, uh, how hot your lights are, where your lights are. With something this, oops, with this long of an animation, um, you may need a couple lights just to get the entire thing lit up. Um, I mean, it doesn't seem like it goes very far, but it does. If I have a light down here, and it looks perfect there. When I rewind this back here, that may be completely dark. 
So I may need to add another light that's you know kind of following him along the way, or is just big enough for the entire scene. Okay. Cool. I should probably save that. All right. Any questions on that? No. All right. So I'll be around to assist. Um, and then 